this marble paper is such a fun thing to do. Okay, let's see. I think I've got, um, yeah, it's these small letters. It's small letters. So this automatically has a transparent layer in. If it has no transparent, these letters over here will be in bold. So I know that I've got a transparent layer there. What can I do to be exciting and quick? Because everything is pretty drawn out. I don't have to be quick. I just... Let's see what I can do here. I don't know why I even said quick, because there's no way in the world I'm going to do a quick video when I get drawing. It just doesn't work that way. I wonder if what happens when I do a bubble. There's a bubble brush. If I do a bubble brush on top of everything. Let's see what this looks like. There's a transparent layer, and I don't think I can do a blue bubble. I'm almost sure I can't. Let me click one and see. Oh, it's not going to be blue. Oh, that's okay. That's nice. That must have been one of them I didn't... Uh, okay, that's nice. I like that. So now I've got that bubble on there. I wonder what if I can swirl the background on it some. Well, you know I'm not going to do that right away. I've got a bubble I can use. Let me play with this some first. Okay, uh... Oh, good. I've got a transparent bubble I can play with. I'm excited. Let's give a little bit of a threshold and let me pick out my uh, my browns. There's my browns. Okay. I can take those browns and increase by one. Select. Grow by. We'll just grow by one and see if we can pick up some of the miscellaneous things inside. Then you shrink it again by one to get it back to the same size you had it. Okay, let me put it layer up on top. I can cut that. Do I want to cut it or duplicate it? No, let me just duplicate it. Copy, edit, paste in place. So I've got that layer on top of everything. Okay, uh, to a new layer. Now we've got it there, but we've also got it there. I didn't remove it, I just put it on top. So since I've got that layer, let me do a transparent layer here. Okay, let's pick this layer. Pick the transparent part. Let me show what my transparent part is. You see what I'm picking a trans. I'll take it first and go to, uh, to image size. Okay, pick the transparent part and then reverse it. And I wonder why I've got all these big areas. That doesn't make much sense to me. Unless it's the little tiny edges. But I, I guess what I can do is just go to this layer that I have nothing on. That layer right there. And let me paint it um, black and see what it does. Oh, they're a little small ones. That's what they are. Okay. Because there, when I look at it, black, select none. Okay. I guess those little lines might, they may look good, they may not. Let's take a look at it. What's that look like? It's not bad. It's not bad. It may, it may work out just fine. So I want to take and blur those. I love Gaussian blur in case anybody has ever noticed that. But you'll see it's one of the most common things you'll see people use in here. And here's the layer I painted on, see? That's the one I, I removed and I pasted on top. Now you can see that little bit of an edge on it that was left by the uh, by blurring that. When I blurred it, I took it out beyond the border so you can see it. Now I can duplicate that letter, duplicate it, not only does it get darker, but I can take the one and slide it, offset it. And it will add some real dimension to it then. And again, see how the, it's not set in the center? So we'll take that and say, okay, 
make the layer to image size. Now let's go down here and pick out the now we can take this since this is the top part we can take this and join them down together merge down merge down so we've got all that right there that's an all-in-one layer so when I put that layer on I've got it back there it is there's another layer I've had in there but we don't want to look at them right now when we take this layer right here duplicate it always duplicate I can turn that one off well, let me pick the pink in here I want multiple areas selected and I want a little bit of range because I want the pink and that dark looking pink looking and now I want the pink also and it actually look like it's selected pretty good but I still take and uh, grow it by one and then go back and shrink it go back and shrink it by one Now I want to take in this one and remove it. This one I'm going to cut it. Select, edit, uh, cut. I'm going to paste it in place, but I'm going to paste it underneath. Select, or edit, we'll go paste, in place. And you won't even be able to tell it's been removed. There it is. And we'll turn that to a new layer. Put another layer in here. Now if I take this, we'll select again. Select the outside. Select the transparent and invert it. That way we get only that object right there. Oh, I want the transparent layer. Edit, undo invert. Let's use that transparent layer. And we'll go in here and we'll paint that black. Look at that. Here, we'll remove this top layer so you can see what was done. And we make two of these. Select none. Now I'm going to take one of them and put a Gaussian blur to it. Blur. Put a good, pretty good size area of blur in there. Okay, now if we put that back in. You can see that little blurred area along the edge. Now of course that can be doubled up. and made more distinct. So see what we've done? We've actually looked, shown three layers now. We've got a top layer. We've got the second layer. And this actually, depending on how your eyes look at it, I guess, it can either look like it's lower or look like it's higher too. Now let's do something with a yellow. Let's see. We've got this one here. I can take and merge this down. Merge down merge down we'll merge it down one more get rid of that black part let's look at something just for fun if I take that and I slide it oh look at that all of a sudden it makes everything to a whole different dimension that's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. So let's go back and make that new, not new from visible. We'll take and uh, make that layer to image size. And make it a little bit faint so it's not, we'll add to the opacity of it a little bit. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. nice nice I like it so far so good what can we do with the yellow 
border the yellow. Okay, here's the yellow. Now look at that. We'll take that yellow layer. Choose all that yellow. Put a layer on top. Now we've chewed the yellow, so let's invert. Now we've choose the area outside of the yellow, and we're going to take and paint it. We want to paint it black. Let's paint it. Uh, let's paint it a darker yellow. See, we just chose the color, but you have to make sure you're on the when you choose the color. You have to make sure you're on the layer you want to get the color from. Okay, now we're up here, and let's take and paint that color, but paint it much darker. Everything is that color. None. And we want to duplicate that layer and take one of them and blur it. And when I blur it, when I blur it, let's zoom in here. When I blur it, it will make this edge and the edge of all the yellows. When I blur it, it'll put a bit of a shadow to it. So now we're going to take it, go to filters, blur it and you see what it's done it's put a little bit of a dark edge on all that yellow back it off some okay now let me duplicate that layer and see what it does see where it's come up into the yellow now I'm going to merge it down with the one I just made now look at this layer. This comes right up to the border. So what I want to do is choose it. I want to mess up. I want to choose it right there. And I want to subtract it from this top layer. Now look what's happened select none. All the yellow has a little bit of a dark border to it. Now let's back off. Probably wouldn't have hurt if it had been a little bit bigger. If it had been expanded. But then it looks real good there, but not here where the pink is. Okay, let's back, back off and look at it. Now if I duplicate that, there it is. So we can take and merge it down, merge it down, merge it down. I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to blur it again. Okay, good. Now if I pick my yellow, let's, get, let's take this, we'll go run from here and do a uh, new from visible. That'll get rid of everything down there. And we'll take and move our drop up on top. We're not ready to do anything with that drop yet, but we've got it handy there. And back down a little bit on the sides. Okay, now if I go in here and I pick up this I want to see if I can get those to look a little rounder or do something different with them with all these um and that one there looked kind of ugly that's an ugly drop those are ugly drops I guess everything can't be perfect but let's see if we can straighten them up let me get a color here I'll get that color and my paintbrush right there and we'll go down and take a look at that see if I can't make that look a little bit prettier Oh my God, there's an ugly drop in it. The drops go, that's ugly. 
Okay, I'll go back to the paintbrush. I'll use paintbrush instead of the uh, that paintbrush, and uh, I'm going to use solid line. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't think I want to fade that in any. I just want to do that solid. But I can control with the opacity. Yeah, it's a better looking drop. I am doing a video, so I'm not going to go crazy on details here. You can, of course, do much more with the details if you wanted to. And if you hit the close brackets, there's close brackets and open brackets. Close brackets, I mean open brackets, um, shrinks it and close brackets closes it. Unless we we'll do something in here. We'll try to make these look a little bit better anyway. And I, my opacity is pretty light. I'm doing multiple clicks to have that darken up like I wanted to. Maybe they beef that up a little bit. Okay. I suppose I could even do that pink down there. That pink's a little ugly too. So if I get the pink, I've got to go here. See that pink layer? I could get my pink here though. I guess I can get it there. Okay, there's my pink. Let me increase the size a little bit. Okay. A lot of this is to show how you can do it, not necessarily that we have to do it for this video. So you can go around and clean up anything you would want to the way you want to. And let's back down again on the sides. Now you can go, we'll go up here we're going to select these uh, brown dots again. I got more than the brown dots in there. I got to cut my threshold down, select none, and reselect those brown dots. Okay, select then. We'll grow it by uh, a couple to see if we can get that whole dot. There it is now. Maybe I don't want to shrink it. Let me zoom in on it again and look at them. That's okay. I'd like to increase it by more. I'm um, select to grow by grow by one more. Okay, that's fine. Now I can actually go to these dots. You see these dots are separated from everything else. If I want to go to that dot, I can say, let's see, let's paint something on there to make that look a little bit lighter. Okay, I've got a paintbrush picked out that's not a giant big paintbrush. And my opacity, so it's not going to do it all at once. And just all, but I do have a sharp brush. I should have picked a brush with a... where the hardness isn't so much on the edge. There we go. There, that's nice. There. There's the top part. I can do the top part on that dot. And decrease the size of my brush a little. A little more control with it. Okay, there we go. And go to that one. And go to as many as we want to. We can go through the whole drawing. But I'm, I'm not going to go through everything and do it. I'm not going to do that. Not for my demo here. And we'll go back to another color. There's the color and, and darken it. And when we back out, those will look like buttons almost. That's 
what I should do right there. That's my other color right there. So to switch back and forth, all it is a matter of going like that to do my dots. And it gives them kind of a round look. And if you push down the um, space tab, you can draw. You could drag your image around. See, that's by pushing the space tab down. So you can drag it to work on different parts of it. So let's go up here and I'll put my light color up on top. And notice because it's selected, it only goes in the area within that selection. There's the top. And there's the bottom part. Very easy once you're using just a couple colors. If you put them both in there and you just switch back and forth. There's the top. there at the bottom and again if you're really doing something getting involved you'd want to do every one of these dots about as much as you could do because when I back off you'll be surprised how much uh, dimension I added to them I'd added a lot of dimension in there we'll do that we'll go back and select and do a couple of them down here just for the fun of it Oh, increase my opacity, and it should be pretty quick to uh, say undo, select none. And if I increase my opacity on my brush, it uh, it won't be as as beautiful, but it will be faster. There, There's a dark part there, a dark corner there. There, dark there, some dark there, dark there. Okay, good. Now go to the top and put the reflection back in the top part. Okay, there's some reflection on top, some reflection on top. Little reflection there, uh, little reflection there, little reflection on that one. There we got it. Okay, now select none. That's pretty wild. It's pretty wild what it did to it. I am a little surprised my yellow in here didn't come out with a little more depth to it. This had a good depth. I didn't offset that the way I should have. So let me see if I can play with that some more. Make that. I like how that pink looks so deep away from the top. And I think I would like, I want my idea was to have this yellow looked deep also but maybe I should have just taken that yellow and said I want it to be a higher instead of lower so I'm going to see what happens when I try to select this okay I'm going to take them this is kind of a this is definitely a, a dream idea this may not work especially since it selected my yellow up here. I don't like that too much at all. But I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is try to, see if I paint it by hand, I could get it to work. Oh my God, there's a lot of fooling around now. Maybe if I narrow my threshold on my colors down. Well, that's for I mean, I have it at zero. Okay, select none. Let me try this again. Select by composite. Let me select by. Select by saturation. See what that does. Oh my God, it selects everything select none. I guess we don't want to select, but oh, it's because I'm on the wrong layer too. Okay.
That's a little different. I still don't like that, but I'm, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try something there. I'm going to take that. And I'll use the black or very, very dark. And I can see myself not using this. But I want to try it. So select none. Now I want to duplicate that layer. Duplicate it. And I want to take one of them and slide it off to the bottom there. And turn that into a... Now I want to take this top right here and select everything in the top. And if you see, it will not select that bottom layer. It will only select the inside of the top layer. But I will go to the bottom layer and delete it. Then when I show the top layer, you see what happened to the bottom. Select none. You see there the bottom right there. And I think if I blur that a little bit, it'll give that the illusion of a height. So I can take this layer here that I just did, give it a little bit of a blur, a blur now but I want to give it just a little more okay and that's good it did it added more dimension to it, it added more dimension that's what I wanted that's what I wanted actually this is almost exactly what I wanted okay a new from visible it definitely is a long cry from the original marble paper. We'll look at the original marble paper here. There's the original underneath, and there's what we've done with it. And the real reality is you can actually take and fade that out, and it gives a very light appearance of the 3D without being so intense. So that if you're doing like if you're doing like in a notebook or something, sometimes that intense is way way too much. If you're doing writing paper and you want to do notes and papers to to make notes on in a uh, in a journal, that'd be very good just to take and give that little bit of illusion without being so intense. That's pretty intense. So it depends on what kind of a look you're really looking for. That's kind of, that's pretty nice right there to tell the truth. That back off. That's pretty nice. I'm going to take that. I'll be saving this whole thing to play with even more. So I'm going to take this and uh, make a new from visible. That means all the, everything else doesn't count. Now this is what's there. So I've got my choice between that. My aunt. Oh, that's because I made it faint. I took away from the uh, color. So anyway, there it is. Now what can we do with that? We've got that dot. That dot. If that was fainter, would that, what would that look up there? Oop. I won't make that fainter. My, uh, it's a little more bubble-like. This is 100% experimental here. I'm not even... Uh, this was not in the game plan what I'm doing now. I know you're supposed to be able to spiral this stuff. I've done it in the past, but it's been a long, long time. Long time. I've rechosen that, and I think they duplicate this because I'll be spinning this here. I think there's a filter that will spiral that. It's a noise reduction, but I distorts. Is it in my distorts? Where's it at? Lens distortion. There you go. Oh, look at this. Watch what this will do. Oh, 
Okay, the main says we'll just use it like it is and see what happens here. Nothing. Okay. So we'll undo that lens distort. We'll go back again to uh geez, what was I at? Distorts. Lens distort. Okay, now we'll give it all a little bit of power and see what it does. Main. Okay, we don't want to do that. Edge. Zoom. Why is it, why is it doing that on my... I got to admit, I'm, I don't understand why it's doing that. Shift X. Shift Y. Now with this storing it, maybe I have to actually take that and increase the size of it when I'm done to get it to fit inside of that. This is pretty bad. I'm in the middle of talking to myself here. I'm really not talking to anybody but me. Oh my god. Okay. Spirize. What's that one do? Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. That's what I want. There, it'll show the curvature, the amount. I can actually do more. Okay. That I like. I like how that came out. Now we've got that on top. And see, even if I take my bubble away, it's distorted like it should be a bubble in there. Now I'm going to take and uh, put in a visible layer, another layer in there, and I'm going to paint it black again or dark again. And select none. I'm going to duplicate that layer. Okay, there's my distortion underneath. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to take that layer and slide it off to one side. i got to back up two steps. I wasn't in the right layer. Okay, there. And now I can take and slide this down. Again, put it back to uh, image size, blur it, blur, Gaussian blur. Okay, now choose my top one. Turn it off and subtract it from my bottom one. There, I've got a shadow setting behind it now, behind the globe. And I can make it faint. Now, that also could have been done. That also could have been elongated and done, too, but that's good enough. That's good enough. I'm not going to get too carried away here. Okay, now, if I move, I think if I take and merge this down, Okay. That come out pretty good. It kind of showed how to do it. There on there. Let me see if I can do a little more with that uh, with that reflection look up on top. Let me take in. Uh, And 
it selects from path. I won't paint that white. I'm not going to paint a white like that, am I? I'll paint that white. And take that and blur it. And let's slide it a little more. Yeah, that's good. That's a good place right there. Good. To the image size. And you could even do a darker down to bottom. I don't think that's really a... What would happen if I took that and inverted it? No, I don't want to do that. Okay, what have I done here? What have I done here? I like how that come out. I like how that come out. What could I do that's a little strange? Now we're, we're actually we're actually finished with it. The nitty gritty is we're finished with it. But now it's, it's the idea to say, what am I going to play with to uh, have more fun? What if I take this layer and I duplicate it? Then on this one here, I'm going to subtract some of that pink in there. So I don't want everywhere. I just want this one in here. So here's that pink. Now I think if I cut that, you'll see no difference. You don't. But there's a hole in there. If I take that out, you can see there's a hole in there. So what I might be able to do is make another layer, pick a brush, and do something in that background. What could I do in that background? text. See what kind of text I have. I experiment a lot with my text. I don't know which one was which one came out good. To, oh, that one looked like the one that came out good. So let me shrink that brush down a little bit. And uh, I have no idea what this is going to look like. None whatsoever. But I just kind of thought maybe a, it looked like, looked like there was text written in the background. Not bad. Okay, if I duplicate that, it's a little bit darker. Okay, that's kind of fun. So I could actually do that if I wanted to over here too. I go back that layer again, select none, and more text in there. That adds a little bit of a mystery to it. Like, what is all this tech stuff about? I like that thought of mystery. Why is there text in there? What does that text say anyway? Okay, let's put another invisible layer in there and we'll put text in another couple places. So now I'm sold on the text thing. So we'll go up here again and we'll pick out two areas here. See? Instead of just one, I'm going to mark so we get two of them. I can get this one here. Oh, that's way too much. Okay, that one. And this one. And that one. And we'll delete them. And we'll go to this layer. Put 
one more layer in there. We're going to use one that hasn't got any writing on already. Go back to the writing again. Okay, here's some more writing. We'll put some flare in there. So we can put a little bit of flare in the bottom. Make it smaller. Duplicate that to darken up, move it down. And that puts a little bit of mystery in. What is that all about? What is that lettering about anyway? Okay, now we take and take all that and make a new from visible. What that means is nothing below counts. This is the final image at this point. See everything else below turned off. And that's the image. When you do from visible, it takes whatever is visible on your screen and puts it up on top. A lot of times that's good to do it for no other reason than to preserve your uh, uh, where you're at. So if you do something you don't like, you've got a copy of that. Now if I turn this on, not that one, that layer is no longer needed and that on, and that on, and that one, and that one, and that one, we've got our image back again. The same as this one right here. They're just the same. But if I go here and I put a layer in, let's go in here. See, I just can't quit. I get like a little kid when I get drawn on these things. Okay, let's get a color. We'll go to this and find a, a blue. That's a good color, a blue. And I'll go to this layer, which has nothing on it. I just made that layer. And uh, I'm going to paint it. We're going to shrink. For some reason, I stick the number. I like sixes and twelves and uh, and sixteens, uh, and I don't know why. It's just uh, something I do. And that's in this layer right here, which you can't see. But actually, where I, where I just slide it up is visible. Or if I were to turn this off, it turns visible with all the writing in it. We'll take this one here and slide it up, and there it is. Select none. Now, it doesn't look good over that bubble, so let's cut it off of there. And the rest could be okay. It brings that bubble up. Actually, if you cut it right at the edge of that bubble, it would look like the bubble is sitting on top of it, but this is fine. This is fine. Now I can take that and select that again. This is going to be fun here, what this does. Put a layer underneath it. Paint it black. Select none. And we're going to take that black layer and offset it. Look at that, look at that, oh my god. All I gotta do is put a name across this and when people see it, they're gonna say, holy macro, I gotta click on that picture and look at it. That's a weird one. Okay, there it is. Make it a little bit fainter so it looks like a shadow. And there we go. There's my thumbnail, you got the video? And I've got the thumbnail. So all I've got to do is go here and make another layer from the visible, new from visible, put some text in here. And what am I going to call this video? Oh my God. Special, of special effects. Let's see. I don't even know what color to make this or anything. I haven't really thought about this at all. 
Oh my god. Okay, let's do this and say uh, special effects. Effects. Shadows. With a small H. Shadows. Spheres. Text. And more. And we'll take and blow those letters up. Control A, select all of them, increase the size. Slide it where we want it to be at. I don't know about you, but I think that, of course, that belongs in there. Technically, it should be in there, but I'm going to get rid of those commas. I don't, I see no real reason for that comma, and that should be a, a capital. Oh, I can't hit control. I need to be uppercase S, not control S. Um, special effects, shadows, spheres, text, and more. Good enough. Good enough. The doctor told me time to quit. Okay, we move this over. Um, I've got to make that stand out somehow. I don't favor black all the time, but I do know that. Uh, oh, there the image side. I do know that black will make it stand out. So I guess that's probably what I should do, is take that in. Or I could do a white, I could do a blurry white behind it. I'll show you what's really easy. Okay, so here, we'll take and do something behind it. I'll do it in the black, which doesn't really matter, because I'm going to show you something. Um, we're going to select, grow, by four paint it black, select none, and I can actually say, well, I don't know if I like that or not. What if I take it and I invert that black? We'll just take the color and invert it. Oh, there's what it looks like with a white. It does look better with a white. It all looks so soft and pastel that way. And then I can take and blur it a little bit, Gaussian blur, and It'll give a nice blurred background to those letters without them being too intense. And I think we've got a video to tell the truth. I hate to put a gaudy looking star up in there. How can you do a, a, a pastel that's not gaudy? Oh my god. I know stars and flash work, but um Oh, I can't do it to this. I like it too much the way it is. Makes me think of Billy Joel. I love you just the way you are. I can't uh, change it. I got to keep it like this. Okay. Save. And I want to use special effects for my save. I'm going to call it special effects. Shadows. And spheres. That's good enough. JPG. Oh, I know what should be on top. Oh my God, I don't believe I didn't do it. That's going to make it look gaudy too, exactly what I didn't want to do. I know what should be in there. GIMP tutorial. Somewhere GIMP tutorial belongs in there. Oh my God, can I really do it? I like this look so well. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. That's too bad. 
Okay, this is a video.